ever since my brother passed away, we've always had Thanksgiving together. Either we come to Little Rock or they came to McMinnville. I had told Alan that we was going to make hominy sometime and he, he wanted to do that. My mother made it and my grandmother made it. So today we decided we'd just make this hominy since we was going to be here a few days. Let's sit over there with that and be ready to put some more water in it. We put up the iron kettle out somewhere where we won't burn up anything. Make sure we've got water, wood, a good pot, a bucket or a dish pan or something to take it out in. We need a long handle paddle like I brought with me to keep that stirred all the time because you don't want it to stick. How much water are you going to put in here? Enough to cover that corn. You pouring the corn in there? And the water is going to get hot with the corn. Well, hominy is nothing but corn. All varieties of corn will not make good hominy. The, the best that i found is white hickory king, and that's a scarcity right now. So we had some yellow. This is yellow hickory king corn. Is it your favorite? No, I like the white the best. I wanted to try this to see how it, it works, and it does not work as good as the white. It takes a longer time period of time for me to get the hearts out of that, the oh. little black hearts. When it's dried corn, it'll shell right off. It leaves the whole grain. It leaves the little black heart that holds it onto the cob. And the, you, when you cook it right and at the right length of time, that little heart comes out. And then you have to look it and, and pick that little heart out if it's hard to come out. Why is it important to get the heart out of hominy? It just, it looks bad. I just, it, it's nothing wrong with it. It won't hurt it a bit, but, right. but it just makes it look bad to have those little black specks off there you can of hominy. I see, okay, we want it to look good. <laughs> want it to look good and taste good. All right, sure, so, sure. There's no point in going through this. If this was not better and didn't taste better than bought corn, you'd be stupid to stand out here and do this. <laughs> right. It's a lot of work, isn't it? <laughs> so what we're doing is we're starting with corn that's dried on the cob, it's shelled off the cob, and typically the, the corn would go into a crib, which would have, the temperatures would drop and it would go through a freeze. Since this didn't go through a freeze in a crib, we put it in the freezer. That's right. For the same effect. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Of course, back years ago, that was the one food that they could make at home when things got tough. They could, you know, everybody had corn in the crib back then. Now, all I'm doing here is just keeping it from sticking. And it needs a little more water, a little bit at a time added in there because you see, I don't want to cool it down too much. I want the water to go in there little by little. Right, scoop some of that out. Just, just, yeah, just get some of the trash off the top. That's all you need. This is the main thing is cleaning it from here on is to make sure that it's clean. Getting the trash out, we don't need neither yeah, one of them. Yeah, there's a lot in there, you yeah. can see. Yeah, uh-huh. There are the silks from the corn yeah, there. Uh -huh. and yes, that's right. It'll boil and we'll put a little water in there and it'll boil some more. And once we get the trash and stuff out of it, we'll put the lye water in there. You have to have some lye. Lye is hard to get. So I, my husband, before he passed away, managed to get me a can of lye, but it don't take much to make it, so I've kept it for, for all this time. Now you have to take lye seriously, don't you? Yes, you sure do. You have to sign your life away to get one can. Sure, <laughs> sure. You just, you just don't let my hominy scorch over there. So that's taking the lye into solution. See, it needs to sit here a little while. But when we get that boiling hot like I want it, we'll pour that in there. Be ready to start stirring it. Okay. Now you want to be careful not to get that lye water on you. Lye is just something that's hard to work with. It, it'll eat your skin. Right. It'll blister you. You don't need to breathe this right here in the morning. You have to. All right. Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> Thanks for that little tip, Aunt Jeannie. And you stand there and you stir that till it acts like soap almost. It gets thick where it cooks all that off the outside of it. It gets thick and that what we had to date, the water turned an orange color in the kettle. And then we, when, after we cooked it that way, as long as we thought we needed to, we uh, dipped it out and washed it, got all everything we could out, poured fresh water back into the kettle, brought it back to a bowl and cooked it some more. And, and we had to do that four times. And it takes several washings to get all that lye out of there. We want to make sure it's all out. Yeah. And you do this till you're 
you know that you're clean and you're tender. Mm -hmm. Clean you're and tender, that's the goal. Clean and tender, that's what we want. Okay, good. <laughs> so how many people do you know still make hominy? I don't know any. I think I'm the last of the breed or something. <laughs> well, you're doing a good job teaching. <laughs> Thank you.